All right, hello everybody. Um, this is the first attempt at doing a voiceover video. So testing, testing, one, two, three. To begin with for this piece, uh, I wanted to familiarize myself with uh, Treebeard's face. So I wanted to do a little preliminary study, um, trying to um, push him towards something recognizable as Treebeard without getting too close to the uh, concepts of the movie. Um, there are quite specific sort of descriptions of him in the books, so I wanted to make sure that um, he read as something natural and believable without being too close to um, something that's been seen before. For his pose, I was thinking back to some pictures I saw of a New Orleans jazz musician from the movie Treme, no, from the TV series Treme. Um, and there's a very charming picture of an older man sort of dancing on stage, having a good time singing and playing with a band. And so I imagine Treebeard as this sort of character walking through Fangorn Forest and, you know, singing to his little audience. Oh, Rowan mine, I saw you shine, and so on. Um, I like the idea of, you know, little <laughs> animals sitting around in the trees, snapping their fingers, having uh, joined in the fun. As I usually do, I uh, start out with a pretty tight uh, line sketch. This turned out to be uh, more than I bargained for, kind of, with this guy, since uh, it's a pretty huge guy. It's a lot of details, a lot of foliage, and there's a lot of um, smaller elements that need to be designed. But uh, in the end, I think it worked out pretty well. Actually, I wished I had taken more time doing this so that I could have um, really designed a lot of the more intricate details of his beard, for example. They turned out to be quite sort of natural in the end and uh, it would have been fun to try and get more um, design work in there so you know lessons for next time I guess um, I liked working on his hands giving him these like long kind of creepy nails I thought was a cool idea uh, maybe having them sort of constructed by crystallized amber or something so you'll see me come back and try to render that later um, I also wanted to um, get that sort of feeling of size by you, you'll see on his hand for example There's a tiny little squirrel sitting so that's a good indicator, but also the little trees growing out of his head um, the different kinds of foliage and root system that makes up his legs and so on um, For the general line work I tend to focus on being kind of clean and specific so I don't want to use anything that's overly reliant on pressure sensitivity. Um, I'll do a lot of sort of flipping back and forth <clears throat> on the on the canvas to keep my eye fresh, but uh, usually I'll rely on a brush in Procreate called Narinder Pencil, which yields really clean and nice results. So at this point I'm sort of going into the sketch and trying to uh, needle out a lot of little uh, folds and details what I want to do is to make as many statements uh, visually about the spatial nature of the character at this point so that I don't really have to deal with that when I'm dealing with larger light problems and with the colors. Um, at this point it's also really useful to have, well for this one it was really useful to have a bunch of plants around the house so I could go and look at them and uh, take inspiration and cues about you know how leaves fold and how they overlap each other. That sort of thing is quite nice to have. Um, it's a nice little lesson for for other concepts too. That having some real life applicable reference is a million times better than just pictures. So I would definitely suggest keeping that in mind. Another advantage we have. Uh, living where we do in Oslo is that we're quite close to the botanical garden so going there and you know looking at plants and looking at larger trees and different kinds of trees is also super useful so a lot of the <clears throat> the little shapes inside here are specifically inspired by um, trees and bushes and roots and stuff that I, I found around the botanical so I think for, for future 
um, Patreon illustrations, I'll do a better job of going and finding um, uh, reference photos and showing you. So now I'm doing the outline. <laughs> you can see that I was doing some lines inside of the silhouette there, and that's essentially just to find all the holes in my silhouette and get a, uh, a clean block in. And then it's about treating the the figure with flat colors, trying to get uh, sort of interesting variations within the color scheme of sort of natural colors. The, um, the audio quality is a little uh, shaky here. I'm sitting in our um, Airbnb in uh, Frascati in, uh, in Italy and uh, <laughs> trying to do the first recording. So if the audio quality suffers for that, I, uh, I can only apologize. So here I'm trying to sort of flesh out the, the bark and tree structures without being too monotone or too um, sort of singular in the colors. I think it's usually pretty fun to play with um, like close crop color variations. I'm just saying that six times quickly. Um, and um, sort of setting up a, a close harmony of colors and then sort of offsetting that by some sort of core color. So <clears throat> you'll see little spots of orange, for example, popping up as, as sort of the, uh, the offset color. Which goes really well with the green as well, so I think that worked very, very, um, very well, and it also took me into the the rendering quite effectively. Um, now we're going into the uh, light and shadow. So here I'm trying to think purely on a binary scale. So what goes up, what goes down, what actually is hit directly by the primary light source, and what isn't. I'm trying to not think too much about uh, secondary and tertiary light sources, and only uh, keeping it very simple. You know, trying to um, minimize the trouble for myself, and that's kind of a, a central structure. Of this whole technique is to keep um, the big problems away from myself, so I can deal with the small ones and then solve the big ones as a combination of all the small solutions to the small problems. Um, working from generals to specifics, so you saw that in the line art, line art as well, <coughs> that um, I dealt with sort of the large um, shapes of Treebeard first and then went into smaller and smaller detail. Usually I'm pretty uh, rudimentary about backgrounds, uh, but for Treebeard I kind of wanted to do something elaborate. <laughs> You'll see me abandon this at some point um, when I realized that something simpler would really be more effective in putting focus on the character. So, uh, you know, it's never too late to admit that you fucked up, but um, I did have some some, um, some fun, sort of pushing things around and uh, trying things and having ideas, but in the end it didn't uh, didn't pan out. I think if I did a whole preview illustration, uh, it might have, but then I would have also spent more time composing an illustration around it. Here I went kind of intuitive, uh, and for you know a little while I had hope, and then uh, then I crushed it. So this is the second light pass. Uh, I'm thinking sort of a, a bright daylit scene, so I wanted to really exploit the, um, the sort of top heavy light there and try and wrap it over his shoulder um, and his head, I'm trying to sort of push out those forms and, and um, get more of a feel of his, uh, his three dimensionality. You see me struggling a lot with uh, trying to balance between respecting the large shapes and focusing on the small ones. Uh, that's always a problem, especially with uh, a character this big. Uh, I could have gone in here with a large brush and uh, and then cut into those brush strokes, but that kind of thing tends to feel smaller. Like it tends to make the character feel smaller. Um, and at this point, I was kind of looking for ways to to drive home the feeling of a large, large character. So, um, no doubt there are <clears throat> there are many techniques that I could have used here for a better effect, but this was the one I had to hand. So, um, I do like sort of iterating on my basic uh, approach and then sort of learning lessons from what works and what doesn't. So, I took a lot away from this one. Um, and so for, for future giant characters that you guys vote me, um, I'll be testing out other um, ways of doing it. Um, the problem with working um, especially like this is that it becomes quite fiddly after a while, and, and that can be a, 
uh, a trap in as much as losing perspective on what's important. But um, by varying things up and sort of moving around the canvas and um, and still trying to put down and nail down um, aspects of light and shadow and color, um, you can th keep things pretty fresh for yourself and still kind of allow yourself to have some fun with it. So I think that works quite well. Uh, at this point, a lot of detail is starting to come into play, so um, I'm sort of constantly looking in and out on the picture and trying to see what works well. So how you can see my fiddling more with the background and trying to get a read that pushes out those values of the head more. Um, and again, like at that, at some point, this will pay off in me just kind of throwing away the background and and doing something quite simple. But for now, I'm still uh, putting up a good fight, you know, <laughs> and. Um, and for a while it, it, it seemed hopeful, but then at some point I kind of cave and uh, and go for the simple solution, which tends to be the best one in the end. Um, so working on a bunch of the, the details to do with the light, trying to get that cast shadow from his little shoulder tree going. Uh, again, it's about like wrapping the shadow of one three-dimensional object around another three-dimensional object, so there's a lot of so sort of, uh, pre-visualization and then going in and trying something and seeing whether or not that worked and being willing to be honest with yourself about you know, if you fucked up or if you didn't. Um, so for this I think at some point, uh, pretty soon we hit um, a pretty agreeable stage and then uh, sort of move on from that. So again going back and start um, working on the background there. Um, I'm really sort of trying to not get too fiddly with, with the background, but still, uh, every time I start adding something to it, it feels better, and it feels better, and so it's gonna reveal itself to be um, taking too much away from, from the picture, and then, <laughs> then you'll see some drastic changes towards the end. Um, I'm also trying to sort of vary up between working just the details and then doing overall larger changes, so you'll see me go in with large... Um, brush strokes, especially towards the beard to try and give that some more volumetrics. Uh, and then when going back and sort of looking at actual trees again, I see that, you know, this this is a very good technique for getting, you know, the overall shape of generally smaller um, objects to work, but doesn't really do much uh, for this sort of giant uh, tree man. Uh, so again, another sort of round, round of screwing with the background. Uh, at this point, I'm starting to realize that doing too much work on the background is making this an illustration and not a concept piece, so it's kind of character art 101, um, so you know, you never stop <laughs> teaching yourself and learning. Um, I'm also trying to do some um, some interesting things with light that would sort of occur with a large object, so you can see the little sort of cape thing in the background there is um, sort of being lit through by the by the secondary light source and sort of coming through the leaves. Um, and also between his feet, I thought, or between his legs, I mean, it would be interesting to have some sort of god rays coming through, some fill light, uh, and then the reflective light of the ground would sort of give a warm reflection. So, um, always looking for things to, uh, to try and in introduce some more interesting uh, elements into the character. I was always trying to um, not, <clears throat> not just... Um, whittle away on what I have, but try to sort of add more and more. Um, so again, like you, you'll, you'll see periods of this just noodling and noodling and noodling, because um, especially the character this big, it's, it's, it is important to have quite a bit of um, specific detail too, just to sort of sell the, the size of things. I think um, it's one of those places where it, uh, where it gives me away as a draftsman and not a painter, uh, so I should probably work on that too, uh, which is, you know, part of what uh, makes this little project pretty great, because I get to sort of be more self-analytical with, uh, with how I work, so uh, thank you all for that. That's actually one of the greatest things. Um, so again, noodling, noodling, working on that leg specifically. I really wanted to, to settle this idea of moving wood um, with that leaning leg, uh, getting sort of some tension in it, getting some 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 action in the woodwork and that sort of thing. So uh, it's part of the reason why I spend a lot of time there. And you also see me sort of going in and partially uh, painting and brushing away uh, line art as I see it become redundant. 
And I think that's partly yeah, to do with my own um, way of drawing when I get a little too comfortable. I like to noodle away my drawing stage and then uh, now I have to pay for it by uh, essentially having to sit back and, uh, and sort of undo a lot of that unnecessary line work. By this stage, we're getting pretty close to finish. So um, there is a very sort of finicky stage where um, you kind of have to go and zoom around the picture and determine for yourself whether or not the read is correct. Um, that can depend a lot on your time budget, on your <clears throat> on your um, payoff, and how much time you have to dedicate to a piece. And uh, for this one, I didn't feel like I had to rush, so I had a lot of time to sort of go and and see whether or not individual elements felt good, um, which is not what I usually get to do. So again, like that's a that's a very appreciable part of this. Um, I'm very grateful for that. It's um, the video is so stuck in middle zoom, so I can't <laughs> always see exactly uh, what's going on, but. I'm aware that at this point it's mostly um, just rendering um, using the smudge tool a lot to um, draw out approximate elements of um, of a lot of the painting and and trying to get um, nice sort of painterly touches here and there. So at this point, I've taken most uh, of the elements of the painting that are tree beard, and I've um, duplicated them onto a separate layer and then compressed them into one layer so that I can um, smudge over things. Uh, so it's usually my sort of point of no return where I abandon um, all the, the freedom of having many layers uh, and going for sort of completion by uh, committing to having everything on one layer. It can be kind of nerve-wracking, but it also is a very good payoff because you get to sort of assemble your, your or you get to, you get to pull together most of your uh, values and <clears throat> you get to, um, to just sort of focus more on like the cohesive read on the entire concept. So at this point again, you'll see me um, looking into the background and starting to fiddle with that again. Um, I'm sort of looking back and forth between the the line art and the colors, so you'll see the, the colors flashing on and off there. Um, and let's just be sort of checking the difference between the painted read of the character and the drawn read of the character, because I still want to make sure that, um, you know, the original idea of the sketch comes through. And there you go. There the background goes, goodbye! And I figure out that, you know, a black background or a dark gray background with some, you know, blue and some color a little bit of here, a little bit of there usually does a better job than getting overly complicated. So, um, I actually ended up liking this background a lot. I thought, you know, getting those little light rays in the background and that hint of sort of skylight with the blue behind his head, um, that made for a really nice sort of uh, simple read. So, simplicity is often uh, much better than going overly complicated. Uh, I'm a big fan of um, sort of uh, elegance uh, in simplicity rather than overly unctuous detail read so uh, which, which is ironic because I also do uh, <laughs> tend to delve down into the well of like just render 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 and doodle 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 so I guess you know there's gonna be some sort of resolution there at some point um, so again at this point it's trying to get all of the unnecessary drawing details out of the picture and just um, trying to finalize, trying to get to a point where I can say that I'm happy with this and um, and that there isn't, you know, any anything that stands out in my eye uh, looking at this that says, you know, this is not finished, this is not good. Um, that can be um, a time-consuming uh, part of the painting process and it can also be <laughs> unnecessarily drawn out as it's often hard to say goodbye to a piece that you've kind of grown to love. Um, but at some point, you just kind of have to bite the bullet and say, uh, all right, this is done now. I can move on. Um, and at, at the point where we hit sort of uh, the last little noodles and doodles, uh, at the end, I, I kind of say, you know, I can see some line art still, but this is fine. This is good. Um, I'm happy to present this to people. And uh, 
then move on to uh, Wolverine, I guess. <laughs> 